and basically I don't know what I'm going to do next. Hi travellers, I am Anne's daughter Lalika and welcome back to my channel. Well, as you can see from the th thumbnail, I feel like my life is a pharmacy right now. I don't really know how to sum it up. <laughs> so I haven't filmed anything for at least five weeks now and I know that my posting schedule doesn't suggest that from YouTube. Which is good because then it means I have a bit of a backlog, but it doesn't give a real perspective in terms of the time that I haven't really done anything in my life. If you've come to this video because you watched my previous one of being discharged from hospital, I don't know that I feel any better than I did then. So this is one of the bummers of living and working abroad is that sometimes you get sick. If you haven't watched it, I was I went to the ER and just really just collapsed and had a terrible afternoon and ended up being diagnosed with pneumonia and pleurisy. Since then, obviously I finished my course of antibiotics, but I have just been in incredible amounts of pain. Now, what can you learn from this? When you come to China, <laughs> bring the painkillers that you prefer, whatever they are, whatever you usually have, because what I've learned is that you can get these ibuprofen over the counter at any pharmacy. They are called Finbid, F-E-N-B-I-D, and they are like a slow release, like, and I think it's only 300 micrograms per, per pill. So I have effectively been living on these. Now, they prescribed me one a day, which is just a joke. <laughs> I really had to do a lot of laughing through this process because otherwise I might just cry. It's been really hard, really hard and I guess it just sucks because I feel like I'm disabled when I'm really not. I'm just not able bodied right now and China is not made for this at all. So I have been back a few times because whatever they're putting me on is not working. I've been going in by myself because as I suggested in the other videos, my, the administrative staff where I work, their English is just not up to it. They cannot translate medical jargon into useful English. So I've been doing it by myself, which is not recommended, but it means that we've been relying on the apps on usually the doctor's phone. And I've seen a variety of different doctors because it depends what day I go in. <laughs> a different person but I think at this point they all sort of know me. I got given like these and then it turns out yeah you can just buy them over the counter so I went into a pharmacy and just bought six boxes because I'm so sick of this because what's a dosage for us and what is recommended on the manufacturer's website is more than what they prescribe. I don't know how they think that's going to be remotely effective. <laughs> Then I went in another oh, two weeks later and I'm just like, I'm still in pain, man. So they gave me this gabapentin, which when I, because it takes them so long to diagnose, they have freaking all sorts of people coming to consult. I feel like an animal. The whole process is really, they are the vet, I am the animal, because there is no need to speak to me. Also, because they just look at the blood work numbers or any numbers that they happen upon, they never ever ask me. I mean, the only reason why I'm going in is because I'm in pain. And, uh, and they're telling me that the, there is no pain because the results don't show pain. Now, what I, of the very little that I understand, <laughs> and as I say, very little, that I understand is that the numbers don't show pain. <laughs> you would only know your animal is in pain if you ask them. And when you don't ask, then how would you possibly know that? <laughs> but let me not say that a doctor is wrong. <laughs> anyway, so I got given this because the pain guy came along and decided this is what I needed. Now when you Google this, it's for people that have numb feet and hands, it's also to prevent seizures, neither of which I have. So again, if you didn't see my previous video, my lesson for you is to have 
a very good friend or a doctor that is on call from home that will answer all your stupid questions because unfortunately they their I guess culture of treatment is to talk 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 amongst themselves and then they'll they decide after at least an hour this is what's wrong with you and I am furiously trying to Google and check everything beforehand before I leave but no they're already shoving me out the door and lining up the pharmacy for something that has got nothing to do with anything that I've said I just said I'm in pain that does not mean that I need something for preventing seizures <laughs> this also has some horrific side effects I took very few of these before I properly came home and read them read the thing and was like whoa this is not right at all what kind of ridiculous person put me on this I have boxes if anybody needs these I literally have like three boxes on my floor <laughs> I'm never going to consume these I have no need for such things also I have these now this is what I'm saying look up whatever whatever it is that they're giving you look it up in English just put it into Google because you've got your VPN remember <laughs> and see because also they might like they did with these painkillers under prescribe so therefore it's not going to do what it's supposed to do because they're not giving you enough to be remotely useful and basically I don't know what I'm gonna do next that's where I'm at like I've been back enough there are the suggestion was to go to a better hospital. There are hospital ratings here. But what I did find interesting was when I said, so who's the doctor that I need to see? Because these people are specialists in their particular field, right? I'm seeing the respiratory guy. I'm now seeing the lung lady. I'm seeing the pain guy. And, you know, their whole thing is like, oh, we don't know. We And that's it. One person has said they don't know. Yes, that was such a triumphant day. Because instead they're trying to just fob me off to another hospital and I don't have the patience to A, travel, because that's very difficult for me, because the hospital they're suggesting I go to is right in the city. So, uh, plus it's very difficult navigating hospitals by myself in another language that's very hard. <laughs> so I feel like I know this one and I don't want to start again. Uh, also, I have friends that have been here for a number of years and I very much trust their judgment when they're like, no hospital is any better than the other or I've been to that hospital several times and all that you're paying for is to have someone that can speak English hold your hand and walk you around the hospital. Well, now I know that I'm perfectly capable of doing that by myself and I can still get service. Sometimes it's frustrating, but I can still do it by myself. Otherwise, I wouldn't keep going back, right? I do just want an answer for that, and they're unable to provide me with one. And fobbing me off to another hospital to start again does not manage the situation at all. I'm going to say it depends on your city. Obviously, it would be better if I could go to Shanghai, because that's my closest major city, and just go to a proper international clinic and be done with it. But I am in so much pain. It's rough enough for me to get in a car get in a cab up to the hospital like that's my maximum walking is a problem I'm really I don't know what it is but this is not right and we're at the point now where they the doctors are seriously going how much would you like of this thing that we'd like to give you now I'm not a medical doctor so I don't know what the prescription is <laughs> I don't know what's an appropriate amount because I have no training for these sorts of things. I don't know their job. They've just given up, really. At this point, I can come in and just wave at them and I'll get throwing some pills and hope that I go away. Yes, I have had another CT and the pneumonia is down, which is yay. But as I say, because of my everyday pain state and walking is a problem, then I don't actually feel any better. I am very boring right now and every weekend it's like, okay, I'll see you at work on Monday, guys, because I'm just in bed. I only venture out to get things like water and food and I'm just lying down all the time. And I guess I just have to be really grateful this is the first time this has ever happened to me whilst living abroad. 
that it's not something much more serious but of course pneumonia can be very serious so then the other choice was well I can just fly home and flag this entire thing and that's also that's don't think that has not crossed my mind several times but quite honestly I'm like how am I supposed to walk through an airport I can't even cross the street in one set of lights and suddenly the world is very big all of a sudden. I'm very grateful that like my you know really core cool people around me have been so good like going to pick up water and going to um, fetch food from other places for me because otherwise I couldn't have survived this long. I just couldn't have done it and that's the thing like that is very much it just to pack it all in and go you know it's not like I'm getting up going oh woe is me. I mean I'm still very excited about life. It just sucks being minimized. Oh also there have been days when I've overdone it so please be mindful of that if you've had pneumonia and or pleurisy that you'll know when you push it too far. My goodness I was paying for that trip or at least a week afterwards. Certainly friends have said to get out of China because it's very hard to get well here. Environment itself, you know, it's not like it's clean. It's not clean air. And certainly with, you know, something that's a respiratory thing, so one's health is not worth it. And I really should have made different choices before now too. I know it's hard to see through these filthy windows, but this is a nice day. <laughs> this is a really nice day. If you haven't seen my video on the pollution in China, then I will link it below. It's like 5 o'clock. I mean, you can see the beautiful sky. It's like every other day. And obviously as the sun setting here, you can greater appreciate the disgustingness that is the sky. I mean, this is nothing... This is a nothing day. Ugh. Yes, you can wear the mask, you know, the 3M mask. You know, when... I don't, because I don't know when you would even take it off. Like, if you're worried about respiratory anything, to not come here for any length of time, that's a terrible decision. That's my little update. My friends have been very supportive. I'm so grateful. And... It really sucks being sick in China. It really sucks.